Good morning. My name is Tina Sebastian, and I'm the co-founder of Quacoon, a quantum computing startup based in Columbus, Ohio. Quacoon is currently in stealth mode, and we are working on quantum solutions for simulation, optimization, machine learning, and artificial intelligence problems in the manufacturing domain. Before I start, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Denise, Andre, and Farai for their kind invitation to speak and for all the hard work that went into organizing this event. It is not every day that female founders like us get to address such a massive audience, and this would not have been possible without their foresight and vision. To talk about my background a little bit, I have a degree in computer engineering from the Cochin University of Science and Technology and an MBA from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I used to be a classical software engineer for the last 12 years and recently moved over into quantum computing. I'm sure that all of you have already had a heavy intake of technical information, and I'm going to break the pattern a little bit and not present, and just um, I'm not going to talk about the deep technical details or what Quacoon is doing right now, but rather the five main principles of making a smooth and informed transition. So I'm not going to talk about the deep tech details of what Quacoon is doing right now, but rather the five main principles of making a smooth and informed transition from a classical software engineering background into quantum computing. Now, this may be more useful for all the classical engineers listening who are thinking of making your first move into quantum, but it may apply to everyone else too. So um, going into the principles, my first principle is you don't need degrees or credentials. You just need hard work. So several years ago, when I was leading a team of software developers, the HR sent me a couple of candidates from a coding boot camp. Now, these are young men and women who had worked for a few years in a very different profession, like marketing and legal, and they had decided to switch to software at some point. They did not have an engineering degree or a computer science degree and had absolutely no experience in working as a software developer until they had attended this three-month coding bootcamp. Now, having grown up in India, where almost every person you meet is either a doctor or an engineer, I was initially very hesitant to bring them on board. But we did end up giving them a chance, and that was when I realized that I was very wrong. At least a few of them outperformed their very educated counterparts only due to their sheer determination and hard work. And I see the exact same thing in quantum as well. There will be no shortage of people to tell you what you can and cannot do. There will be a lot of people who will not take you seriously or ask if you have a master's or PhD degree as a basic requirement. Since this is a nascent field, they won't be able to ask you for 15 years of quantum development experience, but they may try. And none of this will matter. All you need is a willingness to learn and put in the work. Now, I do not mean to discount the knowledge of a PhD or a researcher in this field. They are extremely critical to the growth in this field and entirely responsible for all the advances made so far. But I strongly believe that every person is capable of understanding absolutely anything. So our minds are nothing short of a miracle, and it is we who tell it what it can and cannot do. So if I tell my mind that it will never understand, say, the principles of superposition and entanglement, it won't. But if I tell it that these are simple concepts like addition and subtraction, it will understand not just these, but pretty much everything else too. So don't, just don't exclude yourself on the basis of credentials or past experience. Principle number two, not all training resources are equal. Find the best fit for you. When I was starting out in this field, I spent a lot of hours online reading and learning on my own. And gradually, I became so interested that I signed up for the certification course at MIT. That was when I realized that a lot of the hours I had spent in the previous months had been wasted because of confusing explanations online and incomplete information. With a booming interest in this field, there is a lot of noise. We see one breakthrough after another being published in the news day after day, to the point that we no longer get too excited when an actual breakthrough is announced. And similarly, there are lots of blogs and websites coming up daily. 
So be very careful about where you go for your information. Apart from courses and certificates at valid universities, some of the bigger players like Microsoft and IBM have very thorough and free resources to ramp up and build your skills. There are also resources like our One Quantum Network and the Quantum Open Source Foundation to help you transcend the initial learning curve. And if you are a startup founder in this space, the Creative Destruction Lab at the University of Toronto is an excellent place to consider. Now, principle number three, you will fail and fail again and again. Keep trying. Now, this is not a principle specific to quantum, but to life in general. And to borrow heavily from some of my favorite business leaders and inspirational speakers, you have not succeeded until you have failed. When I was starting my quantum journey, there were a lot of concepts that went right over my head. And it just took going at it over and over and over again until the main concepts finally sank in. And you're never done. There is always more to learn and understand, especially in a rapidly progressing field like quantum. I have had colleagues with very different views of experience. While a young developer with two years of experience may consider himself or herself an expert, there would also be engineers with several decades of experience who consider themselves beginners. Now, personally, I prefer to always frame myself as a beginner because this keeps you humble enough to ask questions and acknowledge that you do not know everything, that you may have to visit Stack Overflow once in a while for help with a bug rather than refusing to take on that project since that is not your area of expertise. So be eager to fail and do not let failure throw you off track. Get right back on and keep trying. And it is okay to be different. We have normalized the wrong use of what it means to be a founder or a leader to a very specific set of attributes that anyone that does not fit this mold is usually unconsciously excluded. You can look different or you can look like everyone else. You can speak with an accent or not. You can be the loudest person in the room or the most soft-spoken person. It really does not matter. And this is especially true for women in technology when we have to battle not just our own doubts and imposter syndromes, but also stereotypes about competence and all kinds of unconscious judgments. The only way out is to reframe your thoughts to let failure boost your confidence and not destroy it. And so another principle at quantum is that we love failure. Now we're going to principle number four, you're not going to do it by yourself. I have spent hours reading books on quantum computing and taking certifications, which are all very valuable, but it was the actual debate and discussion with experts in this field that brought me the most value. So find your mentors, build your quantum network, use groups like One Quantum to reach out to the thought leaders in this field and seek their inputs. Choose a community either on LinkedIn or a local meetup to regularly get together and share your knowledge and learn from others. And for those of you who prefer just putting their heads down and working and find networking difficult, what I found useful in getting over that internal barrier was to come from a place of generosity. When you think of networking as an opportunity to help others and offer value, rather than seeing the right thing or looking smart, it becomes very easy to share and interact. And that will finally be the most important factor in how successful you are, not just in this field, but in any field. So defining principle at Cocoon is that we are not in the business of quantum. We are in the business of humanity. Be competitive, but also be sure to rule for others, especially those new to this field. Champion them, don't exclude them. Celebrate their successes and be there for them when they fail. There is enough room in this huge boat of quantum for all of us, and a rising tide lifts all boats. And finally, coming to my last and final principle, experiment and be fearless. The future is yet to be defined and we are all creating it one moment at a time. Last summer, we had no idea we would be wearing masks and using and overusing Zoom at the same time this year. We have no idea what we'll be doing at the same time next year. 
The only thing certain is uncertainty. And this, rather than being our biggest fear, should be our biggest opportunity. One of the defining principles at Cocoon is that what we, if what we're doing is not scaring us, then it is not worth doing. We get to decide a future and the future of quantum. The exciting aspect of this field is that there's so much more to be discovered and created, and we are getting started at the right time. If we are fearless enough and not waiting around for permission to take the next big step, we have a once in a lifetime chance to actually change the future of mankind. And we must be fearless and embrace it, regardless of all the noise and the naysayers around us. So here's to an exciting, trailblazing quantum future for all of us. Thank you.